Good day and welcome to our today's tutorials on simple stresses and strain. Of course, we are on numerical number seven. The question here on the board says, we are on numerical number nine, sorry. The question here on the board says, a member, LMNP, this is a member, LMNP, is subjected to point load. Of course, you can see the loads as shown below. We are asked to calculate the force P necessary for equilibrium. And also, we are asked to calculate the elongation of the bar. We're giving E to be what? To be 210, 210 giga newton per meter square. So this is how we we'll solve this question. First, number one, for P necessary for equilibrium. For P necessary for equilibrium, what do we have? You can see from this diagram, what we are going to be doing is this. The forces to the left hand side, of course, for equilibrium will be equal to the forces on the right hand side that is going to the right hand side. That is, we have 50 kilonewton to the left, we have 500 kilonewton to the right. It will be equal to all the forces that is opposing it, which is P and um, 200 kilonewton. That is the sum of forces. I can just say the sum of forces of the left. Is equal to the sum of the forces to the right. It implies that my forces to the left are 50 plus 500, which is equal to 200 plus P. What do we have? 50 plus 500 is, of course, 550. It will be equal to 550. I can take 200 to this other side, I will have minus 200 equals to P. 550 minus 200, of course, is 350. It implies that P equals to 350. Of course, kilo newton. So this is the force P necessary for equilibrium. Now, next, we are asked to find the total elongation of this bar. We are asked to find the total elongation of this bar. Now, we are going to be considering this bar in three sections. We are going to be considering this by three sections. We have LM, ML, and NP. Now, for M, LM, for LM, we have what? We're going to have something like this. Just want to consider their sections. We have L, we have M. Of course, we are giving 50 kilonewton to the left. And if we say we are giving 50 kilonewton, And if we say this bar is at equilibrium, it implies that if we have 50 kilonewton here, of course, you should know that we should have 50 kilonewton opposing this bar. Now, how can we find that? We have P here, which is acting axial at section LM. We also have 500 kilonewton here. We also have 200 kilonewton going this way. So P, of course, is equal to 350. We have 200, which is 200, which is still axial, and we have 500, which is compressive. So in order to get the total axial load that is pulling this bar LM to the right, it will be nothing but P. In order to get the axial load that is pulling this bar LM to the right, it will be nothing but P plus 200 minus 500. So we have P, which is 350. Plus 200, of course, minus 500, because 500 is opposing, so minus 500. So if we do this, what are we going to be having? It will be nothing but what? It will be nothing but 3, it will be nothing but 50, of course, because 200 times 350 is 500, and 550 minus 500 is 50. So here, it will be nothing but 50 kilometers. So next, now, for this section M N for M N what we have we have this for M N what do we have we have 500 kilonewton here we have P here 
So now, if you look at this diagram very well, you can see that we are having a compressive force here. We are having a compressive force here. We are also having a compressive force here. But there is, we have 50 kilonewton, which is opposing this compressive force. Of course, it's reducing P here. P here is compressive. 50 kilonewton here is tensile. So to get the total compressive force that is acting to the right for, of M, N section, what we do is that we have to take away this 50 kilonewton. So that we get the total compressive force that is acting to the right. Now, to do that, we'll be having P, of course, minus 50. Of course, we know that P is 350 minus what? Minus 50. Which is equal to what? 300. So here, we are having a compressive force of 300 kilonewton. Already, we know that since we have a force of 300 kilonewton coming in, in order for there to be what? Equilibrium, a force of 300 kilonewton needs to be compressing at the other side. So, of course, what we're going to have here is 300 kilonewton. So, next, for section NP, for section NP, we have a force of 200 kilonewton here. We have a force of 200 kilonewton here, and which is axial. Of course, it's tensile. We also have a force of 500 kilonewton opposing to the left hand side. We have a force of P coming in, which is 350. We have another force, of course, coming here, which is um, going out, which is 50. So, what we are going to be doing is that we are going to be having, in order to get the total axial or tensile force that is, that is going out from N. Is going to be 50 minus P plus 50 because we are having 50, which is tensile. We are having, we are having 500, which is tensile. We are having 50, which is tensile. But we are having P, which is what? Which is compressing. So we are going to be doing 500 minus P, which is 350 plus 50. So for NP, for NP, are we going to have so NP? Let's take this to be section NP. Of course, we are giving 200 kilonewton tensile to the right, and um, for the left, we have 500 kilonewton, which is tensile, 50 is tensile, but we have P, which is compressive, so it will be 500. Minus P plus, of course, this will give us P is nothing but 350. We have 500 minus 350 plus 50 equal to 200. Of course, you can see that we have 200 to so This is what we have. So now, of course, we are given the area of the bar. The area is uniform. We're giving 2,400 millimeter square as the area. For here, we have the length to be 1,000 millimeter, 1,000 millimeter, and of course, 600 millimeter. Now, we are going to be looking for the total elongation. Okay, what we have here is this. You can see from the diagram, we have, sorry, this was a mistake. We have 600 millimeter square here. We have 2,400 millimeter square here. And we have 1,200 millimeters square here. This area, of course, is for this section. This area is for this section. And this area is for this section. Their length, of course, you can see here we have 600. Here we have 1,000. And here we have 1,000. So this is the initial question. So next, we are going to be looking for the total elongation of the bar. Now, let's assume that this is section 1. We can name this section 1, section 2, and this is section 3. If we do that, the total elongation will be equal to the elongation of section 1 plus the elongation of section 2 plus the elongation of section 3. This is what we are going to have. Now, we know that the total elongation, that is the L, of course, is nothing but what? It's nothing but PL over E. This is what we have. So if we take the total elongation of each, let's consider the total elongation of each, of each bar, so what are we going to have? It will be equal to, assuming this is 1, we have length of 1, 
all over the area of one. So this will be equal to P. Now, what is our P? For bar one, section one. Now, for one, we are having 50 to be our magnitude of pool. We are having L1 to be the length, of course, you can see it's 1,000 millimeter. That's what we have. We are having E. Of course, E is the same. That is the bar. For the bar, we are giving modulus of elasticity 1,0 giganewton per meter squared. So what do we have? First, we are going to be converting. Of course, we have 1,000 millimeter. If you convert 1,000 millimeter to meter, of course, it is one meter. So what we have here is this. We have 50 kilonewton, which is the same thing as 50 times 10 times 10 to the power of 3. This is what we have. Multiply by the length. Of course, we have the length of section 1 to be 1,000 millimeter. But we are going to be combining, converting it to meter by dividing by 1,000. Of course, 1,000 divided by 1,000 is 1. So multiply by 1. All over E, which is our modulus of elasticity, is nothing but 210 times 10 to the power of 9. We have giga there, so we convert. Of course, giga is the same thing as 10 to the power of 9. Multiply by A1. Multiply by A1. Now, how do we get the area? How do we get the area? This is what we are going to do. We have the area there to be 600 millimeters square. It was given from the question. So we have 600 millimeter square. So this is what we have. I keep this unit. Square. But we are converting our unit to we are converting our unit to meter. So 600 divided by, of course, it will be 10 to the power of 6. So we have 600 multiplied by 10 of minus 6. So this is for elongation of section 1. For section 2, of course, we have the same thing. We have P. Of course, we can try to name this one because the forces are different. We have P to L2 all over E A2. This will be nothing but what? For section 2, we have our force to be 300 kilo newton. 300 times 10 to the power of 3. All, of course, is multiplying what? Multiplying 1,000. Converting 1,000 millimeter to meter is 1. Of course, 1,000 divided by 1 is 1. You have multiplied by 1. All over E, which is 210 times 10 to the power of 9. Multiply by the area it was given as 2,400 millimeter squared. Now, of course, you know we are using our units in meter. So we are going to be converting 2,400 millimeter squared to meter. This will be nothing but 2,400 times 10 to the power of minus now, for the third section, the elongation of the third section will be nothing but here I'm having what 600 millimeter as the length, 600 millimeter as the length. I'm having the area to be what 1000. So, at P3L3 all over E, A, B, this will be equal to. P2, which is of course the P3, which is of course the force, which is 200 kilonewton, 10 to the power of 3, multiplied by the length. The length here is 1200, the length here is 600 millimeter. So if you convert 600 meter to, okay, we have what? We have 600 millimeter. millimeter. Now if you convert 600 millimeter, Meter, what are we going to be having? Of course, this will be nothing but 0 0.6 meter. So we have 0 0.6. All over our modulus of elasticity, 0 times 10 to the power of 9, multiply by what? Multiply by our area. The area of the first section was given from the question as 1200 millimeter square. Of course, I'm going to be converting this value to meter because all our Work and in meter. So I have 1200 dividing by 1 million, which is the same thing as multiplying by 10 to the power of 9. So we have multiplied by 10 to the power of 9. So now, 
this is what we have the elongation of the first section lm second section second section l um the l2 and the third section the l3 so what we are going to be doing is that we are going to be adding the three elongations to get the total elongation of course this is what we are looking for from our question so next i'm going to be clearing this side so this is what we are going to have total elongation will be equal to now we have what we have compressive force here for our first bar this is our first bar for our first section that we considered the force is tensile of course which is positive so what we have here is what is 50 and it's 10 to the power of 3 multiplied by 1 all over 210 times 10 to the power of 9 multiplied by what multiplied by 600 times 10 to the power of minus 6. this will be minus we are dealing now with the second section of course the second section is compressive so we are going to be having minus sign here to signify that so we are going to be having minus 300 times 10 the power of what the power of 3 multiplied by 1 all over what 200 times 10 210 rather times 10 to the power of what of 9 multiplied by 2400 times 10 to the power of minus six. this is what we have plus the elongation of our third section which is this this is the elongation it is equal to this 200 times 10 to the power of 3 multiplied so this is what we have so this is just our simple arithmetic of course from here we can decide to take the lcm of of what we have here if we take the lcm all we're just going to do is some few addition and subtraction of course we can still decide to solve this by each of them by part that is we we'll solve this we we'll look for this look for this and then we we'll just say this of course which is the elongation of the first section minus the elongation of the second section plus the elongation of the third section of course it's going to give us this now if we solve for this that is the elongation of the first session we are going to be having nothing but 3.97 times 10 to the power of minus 4 it will be equal to 3.97 times 10 to the power of minus 4 so if we solve this as if we multiply this multiply this and do the division we are going to be having this here minus don't forget if we solve this that is 300 times 10 to the power of 3, of course, multiply by 1, divide by what we have here, it will give us 5.95 times 10 to the power of minus 4. So we are going to be having 5 point what? 5.95 times what? Times 10 to the power of minus 4. Plus, next, we are going to be solving this 200 times 10 to the power of 2, multiply by 0 0.6, divide by what we have here to do that we are going to have 4.76 times 10 to the power of minus 4. We have 4.76 times 10 to the power of minus 4. Now, of course, by the time you minus you do 3.97 times 10 to the power of minus 4, minus this plus this, just press into your calculator, the total elongation will be equal to nothing but 0 0.278 will be 0 0.278 of course i have converted this to millimeter already but initially it will be 2.78 times 10 to the power of minus this is in meter to convert it to millimeter of course you know that you have to multiply by 1000 if you multiply by 1000 it will be equal to what 0 0.278 Of course, so this is our answer for the total elongation of this part of this member, rather. So, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more and more numericals.